Hey everybody, in today's gel press tutorial, I am going to teach you two different ways to make DIY leaf printed seed packets. I have a special guest for this video. It is my sister and she will be doing the fabric leaf printed portion and I will be doing the paper one. These are a great way to sort of journal what's happening in your garden at the time. And I think that people are gardening now more than ever just because of the coronavirus and everyone being stuck at home. So we thought it'd be fun to make little packets of seeds to give to friends and family. Now in my process, I am doing a very old technique that I learned at a Linda Germain workshop and was reminded of recently when Sally Lynn McDonald posted a video of her doing this technique at a show. It's one of the easiest ways to sort of start gel printing because it's such a simple technique for getting lots of dimension and color with just a single print, not overprinting anything. I'm using Golden Open Acrylics today in my Holy Trinity colors. And this is a little branch off of a rose bush in my yard. This is the sort of time capsule part of this process because at different times of year, you're going to have different plants available. Now, instead of just letting the leaves block out that white space, Linda taught us just to put the print back down and pick up the texture that's underneath and you get almost a 3D image of those leaves. Now, when I learned this in a workshop, we weren't doing it with leaves. We were actually doing it with handmade shapes. We had cut out little horses and other shapes, and I just love it with leaves and things like feathers. Now, this is what I call a dirty print. So the first print was a clean print, but I actually put the leaves that had paint on them back down onto the plate to transfer the paint from the leaves into my second print and you can see how much more colorful it is. I get all that teal from the first print even though I had a red background and it just adds a lot of interest. Now I'm using an opaque teal here for the first. You can see how it sort of blocks out the page. I'll be using a transparent yellow and you can see the transparency on the tube of open acrylics which is great. So a transparent yellow and an opaque teal together. Now I have some leaves from my neighbor's ivy. She has ivy growing all over the fence in between our houses. So I grabbed a couple of those. All year it's green, it's really pretty. And I'm pulling those back out and doing a clean print because that is the first time I have used those leaves. So there are the two clean prints and then the dirty print. Really different look and both of them are beautiful. This is a little branch off of the pecan tree in our yard. And my sister and I didn't talk about plants before we decided to do this collaboration. But it's funny because she also picked a pecan tree. This time I'm using a transparent blue and you're gonna see the difference between the way this prints versus the opaque teal. I'm using the other colors are the same. And this is a nice big, leaf and it also has some little bug holes in it. So that's another little time capsule aspect. I can see exactly what was happening with my tree in May of 2020. And then I'll pull that out and pick those up. And that's a clean print. And you can see the two clean prints look very similar. But I do have paint on these leaves and I'm not going to let that go to waste. I have paint on the smaller leaves above as well. So I'll go again with the warmer background so that when the blue transfers, it really pops out on those leaves. This is one of my favorite techniques is to have those complementary colors be the ones that show up in the dirty prints. 
it's always a little more surprising. Don't worry if you don't get the cardstock exactly down in the same place. And I'm going to pick up the ghost print basically on a white piece of paper so that I can use that for my seed packet. I want to be able to stamp something on it. So I wanted the lighter print rather than these more intense prints that I'm creating now. I cut my cardstock to five by seven just to make that alignment a little bit easier in case it was hard to get the leaves out. And here's the pecan again with the dirty side down with the paint on it. And this is such a big leaf. It's hard to pull out without moving the print. So like I said, if your cardstock is the same size as your gel press, that makes this a little bit easier. Look at that beautiful, dirty print. So gorgeous. And then another light print for the seed packet, easy to stamp on top of. Still a moment in time from your garden. So here are the rest of the prints. I just love these so much. So bright and happy. And you are basically nature journaling. Really fun. So I'll hand it over to my sister now. She is going to use a fabric stiffener with some very thin muslin. And I gave her the pattern that I'm using for the seed packet. So she is cutting her fabric and then tearing it into a six by six, which is what I started with as well. I have a PDF of the pattern at my blog post. So you'll be able to download that pattern with scoring and cutting guides. Put your fabric that you want stiffened onto a towel, and then you can either iron it before you start or not. You can also iron it after. And then you're going to spray this magical substance onto the muslin. Now, muslin is very, very thin. You can use a thicker, heavier body fabric for this technique. It actually coats the fibers of the fabric, and it's the best fabric stiffener around. So I have a link to that in the supplies. And my sister found that if she left it out in the sun to dry, it seemed to work really, really well. But you can also just put it on a flat surface like she's doing here to dry. And or if you want it completely smooth, you can iron it before and after. So she is also using golden open acrylics, and here she is using her pecan tree. So that's kind of fun that we picked the same thing. She's blotting all of the paint from around the pecan leaves with just cheap tissue paper that comes in packages. She says that this does the best job of blotting, does a much better job than rice paper or things like that. But look at that beautiful detail on the pecan leaves. Now she's switching to manganese blue for the second print. And she is working on the 12 by 12 gel press. So you can see that hers is much bigger than mine. And this sweet little leaf is a Turk's cap leaf. And you'll see what a fun print this makes. She's going to remove the leaf and do my exact same technique, and you get all that detail of the veins in the little leaf. Switching colors again, she has all these beautiful blues. I found myself, when I was editing this video, being extremely jealous of the colors of blue paint she has. This is Mexican feather grass. I love this. She's going to end up showing you how to sew the seed packet with one of these Mexican feather grass prints, and it's just gorgeous. Now, the reason you want to use the terial is it enables you to get this type of detail in a way that just untreated fabric would not. It basically transforms the fabric into a surface that's much more like paper, and that's why we wanted to print with it. Now she'll use ultramarine blue. This also has some transparency to it. We do love these paints. They will stay wet for a little while. And here's her pecan tree. And you can see she doesn't have as many bug bites on her pecan tree as I do. 
So this one comes out really beautifully as well. The pecans tend to block out a bigger area and transfer more of the veining onto the plate so you can see all that detail. And again, treating the fabric helps her pick that up. And the way she's blotting to remove the excess paint around the fabric right here also helps her line it up if she needs to pull the entire thing off. And look at that. It's just so three-dimensional and beautiful. Back to manganese blue. This is a gorgeous transparent blue. You can see that we like the same colors. And it's easy for her to judge when she has approximately a six by six square. Now this is beggar's lice. This is a plant that if you're walking through a prairie in Texas, will give you little tiny stickers all over your socks. But even weeds make beautiful prints. So I love the way this one comes out. And it does have a really pretty little flower on it. And that flower helps you know when you're about to have to pick a bunch of little stickers out of your socks when you're walking around in the grass. There's all kinds of really unpleasant things in the grass in Texas, including chiggers. But this makes a gorgeous print. Even the ghost there is really pretty. She will add some more paint and go for a few more prints. What's nice about working on this large gel press is the fabric could be any size. So you could have a really large piece of treated fabric if you wanted to make a zippered bag or something like that with these beautiful little prints. This one is so delicate that she can leave that print white and she still gets a great design. So she'll pick up the ghost print with just a piece of cardstock. And that is stunning. So pretty. You could just frame that and put it on the wall. Now she's switching to pure all red. This has a little bit of transparency as well. And it's a color that we both like to print with. You can see we both switch between those warm and cool colors a lot. And she's back to the Turks cap. Now she's doing clean printing only. So she's not transferring any paint from previous prints into her fabric prints. This blocks out a nice big area as well. Such a clean little leaf shape that she's going to leave that one like that. Very dramatic and fun. Now one last ghost printing of the detail image. And all of these pieces of fabric have been treated. And that's why you see those beautiful little veins, just like you would with a piece of paper. It's really kind of amazing. Now, she got the sewing gene in the family. I did not. Sewing machines frighten me. But she's going to make this adorable little seed packet with her sewing machine. And I was asking her about her sewing machine. And it's actually an old enough sewing machine that it says made in West Germany, which I thought was interesting. Now she's marked where her ties are going to be with that neon pink pencil. And she's tying little knots in this twine and figuring out which side they need to be on so that when the packet is closed, you can have it tied shut. How she does that, I don't know, but she figured it out. And she is using my basic pattern. You will have to adjust it a little bit for fabric just because you're not getting that same scoring and folding that you're getting with paper. And also the enclosures will be a little bit different than the ones that you see on my seed packet. And she's going to do these a couple of different ways for you. This one is just twine and it's really cute. So it will just tie closed. So she's tacking both pieces of twine for the packet and for the top of the packet, basically the little flap that folds it closed on there so that when she assembles this, they'll be in the right place. So you can see she had marked where 
When you see on my pattern, it was scored at half an inch. She marked that and she will run down the side of that with her sewing machine to form the packet. This one is so beautiful. That little weed sure made a pretty print. So she'll trim up the extra thread and then see how when you go to fold it close, magically the other twine that she tacked on there is in the right place. To me, this almost looks like denim. It came out so cute. And who wouldn't love to get a little packet of seeds from someone's garden in this little homemade seed packet? Way better than the ones from the store. Lots and lots of our friends are sharing and saving seeds right now, so that's really fun. I have a couple things sprouting, as a matter of fact, and I'm about to plant some beans in the backyard. So this kind of planting has really been on our mind. Look how adorable that is. Oh my gosh. And you don't have to put seeds in here. You can put any little gift in there. It's just a great little gift bag. Now with the Mexican feather grass print, she is going to do some amazing things with a button. I've never seen this in my life because I don't know how to sew. But she's marking her closures again with this little chalk marker. And she's going to have a button on the main part of the packet that you can wrap a piece of twine around, like those old-fashioned manila envelopes that had that type of closure. Now watch this, because this is freaky. So her sewing machine is going to go between those two little buttonholes, magically, perfectly. It's crazy. I'm completely mystified by this. She's pressing buttons. All sorts of things are happening. And then boom. The machine's like, I've got it. I've got this. I'm just going to sew a button on like I'm a magical fairy, button fairy. So she'll trim that up. I want you to note that her on her first pair of scissors, it did say in Sharpie for fabric only. And that was a threat. So I hope that all of you take care of your fabric scissors in the same way. Now again, using the same pattern that I used, about an inch for the top, adjusting a little bit for the fabric. I love the way the muslin made those sort of fuzzy edges on hers. It's really kind of just organic and fun. So see her figuring that out? I can't figure that out, but she figured it out. So she knows where that little twine needs to go. So she will tack that on. This is a little thinner piece of twine from May Arts than the first one. The first one was a little bit thicker. So she'll just tack that on. I don't know what she's doing with those button pressing things. You people might know, but I'm sharing it anyway. She also is using her Archon stand, invaluable for filming little projects. And luckily, we both have one so we can collaborate on things like this. Now she'll do the same thing she did the first time, run down the side of this little packet. Again, looks like denim, except it has a beautiful image from the feather grass. And then that will form the packet. So now all that's left to do is close it and seal up the bottom just sew a seam along the bottom because you don't want your seeds falling out of your seed packet you got to give them a bottom to it and then you'll just fold that over and wrap the thread around the button so freaking adorable and you can see even with a fabric this thin how much body the material gives it so it really has a good structure with thicker fabric, it would be even more like paper. And it works great with the paint. It picks up the paint and the details really, really nicely. So that is supremely adorable. So here's the front and back of 
the paper one that I made. I love that sentiment. It's perfect for right now. This is the Beggar's Lice packet. This is the Mexican Feather Grass packet with the little button closure. Head over to my blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching.